So we're going to have a look at the fourth codility exercise. It's called frog jump and it's in lesson three, time complexity. Now the time complexity um, lessons are going to be about making sure we write efficient algorithms and that we don't exponentially loop through arrays and take too long to do things. So let's go straight into frog jump. Uh, I've got 120 minutes to do this task. Uh, I'm going to start straight away and I've prepared the code already in Eclipse. Uh, just a class frog jump with a solution method that I'll modify to perform this test. So let's get straight into it. And let's see the description of the task. A small frog wants to get to the other side of the road. The frog is currently located at position X and it wants to get to position greater than or equal to Y. The small frog always jumps a fixed distance D. Count the minimum number of jumps that the small frog must perform to reach its target. Write a function that takes in X, Y and D. Given the three integers returns the minimum number of jumps from X to position equal to or greater than Y. For example, given x10, y85, d30, the function should return 3 because the frog will be positioned as follows. After the first jump at position 10, it jumps d30 to get to 40. Then from 40 it jumps 30 to get to 70. From 70 it jumps 30 to get to 100 and that is past y so we make three jumps so the jumps are length d we start at x and we finish at y write an efficient algorithm for the following assumptions x y and d are integers within the range of one to one billion and x is less than y Okay, so I suppose the inefficient way to do it would be to set x to 10 and then make a loop counter that adds 30 each time until we get past 85 because x, y and d are in the range of 1 to a billion. That could take not a huge amount of time, but the most efficient way of doing it is going to be to subtract the beginning from the end so we've got the distance we need to go so in this case 75 and divide it by 30 and take the ceiling of that number so let's just do that so we're going to take in int x int y and int d So the distance we want to go is y, y minus x and the jumps is distance over d but that may not return a whole number but we need to get past the destination so I'm going to do math.ceiling distance over d and return jumps ceiling's going to return double so let's just cast that to an int and let's just test that with x is 10 y is 85 and d is 30 Um, so we want this to return 3. Two. Um, so distance 75 
uh, uh, because D is a D was an int, it was rounding it. So there's three. Um, so let's think of what possible corner cases could be thrown at it. We know that X is less than Y. D could equal zero. Do we know that D is definitely something? D is at least one. So we're going to have no divide by zero error. We know that X is less than or equal to Y. Uh, I'm just going to give it the same X and Y values. I'm not even going to think about it. I'm just going to test it. And it comes up with zero, which would be the correct answer. We need zero jumps if we're already there. So are there any other corner cases? I don't think so. So I'm going to submit that. And run the tests. Example test. Okay, there's just one example test. I can't think of any corner cases that are going to trip this up. We know that D is at least 1. We know that X is less than or equal to Y. We know it works if X is equal to Y. Um, so I'm going to submit that. I think that's a straightforward task and hopefully we'll get 100%. Yeah, 100%, seven minutes it took me, and uh, well, it's still evaluating it, but it's decided I've got 100%. And it's gone past all the tests. Obviously, we didn't do any loops in there, so there wasn't much chance that that was going to take any time. And the time complexity is 01 in big O notation to show that it would have taken the same amount of time, regardless of what the input values were, because it was just a, a calculation. So that's the frog jump. Thanks for watching.